Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode on the Financial Madness. My name is Kozan and I'm here to help you be better with your money. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about whether or not you should make additional repayments back to your student loan. Getting a student loan when going to uni is probably going to be the very first time we encounter a major financial loan in our adult lives. Having graduated in 2014, I constantly asked myself, whether or not I should make additional repayments to my student loan. And I know this is a common question amongst others as well. So let's figure out whether or not we should be making additional repayments to our student loan. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna let you know what I ended up doing. So let's get on with the show. So to understand the answer to this question, we first have to clarify a few rules and facts when it comes to the student loan. We will be focusing on the two most common types of student finance loans, and they are known as Plan 1. Plan 1 for England and Wales is if your course started after the 1st of September 1998, but before the 1st of September 2012. For Scotland and Northern Ireland, this plan counts if your course started after the 1st of September 2012. The other plan is called Plan 2, and this is for England and Wales if your course started after the 1st of September 2012. The reason why we have two different student finance plans is that back in 2011 when we had a UK coalition government they introduced major changes to how we pay for higher education. This saw the yearly tuition fee that students have to pay for when going to uni triple in cost. Now that we've understood that we have two student finance plans in place and only one of them will be applicable to you, let's understand the differences between the two. Starting off with when do you pay back the loan? If you are on plan one, so remember that is if your course started between September 1998 and before September 2011, you only start paying back the loan if your annual salary exceeds the threshold of £19,390 per year. This roughly equates to £1,615 per month. If you are on plan two, the threshold for you is slightly higher. You only pay back the loan if your annual salary is at least £26,575 per year. This equates to monthly earnings of £2,214 per month. Payments are automatically taken out of your earnings as part of the tax system. So once you start earning above the threshold, it's automatically taken out when you get paid. This is if you're employed. If you are self-employed, HMRC will calculate this value for you as part of your tax returns. It's important to note that your payments will stop to student finance if you start earning below the required threshold. So the next thing is to understand how much money we actually pay back. If you are earning an income that is above the threshold, the amount that you pay back is 9% of your income that is above the threshold. Now let me just do some quick maths for both plan one and plan two, just so you understand. Say I'm earning 30,000 pounds per year before tax. This equates to 2,500 pounds per month. In plan one, the threshold per month for paying back the student finance is 1,615 pounds. That means I am earning 885 pounds above the threshold in my income. And 9% of that is 79 pounds 65. And this is how much I would pay back in student finance for that month. Sticking with the same example, but now with plan two, where the monthly threshold is 2,214. This means I'm only earning 286 pounds of income that is above the threshold. And 9% of this value is 25 pounds and 74 pence. And this is how much money I would pay back in student finance for that month if I was on plan two. So the next bit that we need to understand is that it is a student finance loan and because it's a loan we will be paying back interest. Interest is added to your loan from the first date you get your first loan. I remember there was a myth circulating around campus when I was at uni that uh, student finance is actually interest free until you graduate so you can imagine my surprise when I first got my student loan bill seeing that interest started being added from the first ever day I started uni. Now the way interest is calculated is slightly different in both plans unfortunately. So if you are on plan one, the interest rate will either be the retail price index or the RPI which is just a measure of inflation or the Bank of England's base rate plus another 1%. The way that they decide which rate to go with, whether it's the RPI or the base rate, is whichever rate is the lowest. So if the Bank of England rate is lower than the RPI, we get the Bank of England rate and vice versa. As you can see from the picture here, which comes from the government website, which I'll put a link in the description down below, they've actually tracked the history of the interest rate on those that are on plan one. 
And as you can see in the most recent of years, it's kind of bouncing between one to 2%. If you are on plan two, the interest rate is calculated in a slightly different way. The interest rate is calculated on the RPI rate plus anything between zero to three percent and this zero to three percent is determined by how much money you earn so i'll break that down just a little bit further if your annual income is equal to or below the threshold for plan two so that's twenty six thousand five hundred seventy five pounds you will be just accruing the rpi rate in your loan if you earn above the threshold you will be charged the rpi rate plus the zero to three percent the added percentage is calculated based on your earnings so this will be in line with whatever the government have set in place but the percentage stops increasing once you earn more than £47,835 per year as the percentage increase is capped at 3%. And finally, the last bit that we need to understand is when do we actually stop paying the student finance loan back? Now in both plans, this will happen if you A, pay back the loan in full plus any interest that you've accrued up until that point in time. B, the loan is written off if you pass away, so that loan doesn't actually transfer to your next of kin. C, the loan will be written off if you become unfit for work. And D, if you are on plan one, your loan is written off after 25 years since you graduated. If you are on plan two, it's a little bit longer. This is 30 years after you graduate. Now we have a good basis of understanding what the rules and facts for each of the student finance loans are. Now we can then begin to ask the question, should we pay back the money early or not? Because we are able to make additional repayments to student finance on top of what is automatically taken out of our earnings through the tax system. And the way that I answer this question for myself about whether I should really pay back more or not is by asking the following questions. Question one is, will I end up paying back the student loan anyway through the automatic system? For those that are on the plan one scheme, it is highly likely for the majority of you guys and girls that you will pay back the value of the loan plus additional interest before the 25 years are up. For those that are on the plan two scheme, it's actually slightly different. It is quite unlikely that you'll pay back the loan in full before the 30 years expire. It is those that are on higher incomes that are likely to pay back the value of the loan plus any interest as well. For those that are on the plan two scheme, there is actually a really useful calculator provided by Money Saving Expert. I'll put a link in the description box down below. And this calculator predicts whether or not you are likely to pay back the loan in full before the 30 years are up. Now, based on this, you could argue that for those that are on the plan one scheme, that you should be making additional repayments to your student finance loan because the earlier that you repay back the loan, the less interest you'll have to pay as well. And you could argue that for those that are on plan two, because I am unlikely to pay off the value of the loan anyway within 30 years if I just let the money roll out of my earnings, um, I should not make those additional repayments. But before we conclude, there are a few more questions that we need to consider as well. Now, the next question that we need to consider is whether or not we have any other forms of debt. Now, for those on either plans, but particularly for those that are on plan one, where I demonstrated earlier where the average interest rate being charged is about the one to 2% region, plan two, it's slightly higher to five to six. This is still likely to be the cheapest debt you will ever have in your adult life. Comparing it to other types of financing that we're likely to take out, a mortgage, for example, typically ranges from two to 5%, the lower part only being fixed for a certain amount of years. Other types of financing, such as personal loans and credit cards, typically range from 10 to even 20 plus percent. So considerably more than the student finance interest rate that we're currently being charged at this point in time. And when paying off your debt, it makes financial sense to pay off the debt that is giving you the highest amount of interest. And with student loans being on the lower end of the scale, this is unlikely to be the case. The next question that we need to think about is what happens if our income changes, but changes in a negative way? One of the unique things about the student finance loan, which you won't find anywhere else, is that if you find yourself in the future earning less income or even income, which means that you are now earning below the threshold, the amount that you pay back the government automatically through the tax system will either be less or even zero if you are earning below the threshold. And if you voluntarily overpay your student finance, this process is irreversible. So you will not be entitled to get your money back. So if you overpaid at some point, but then perhaps maybe the next month you've lost your job or you lost a significant amount of income, you will not be able to ask student finance to get some of that money back because the process is irreversible. And finally, the last question that we need to think about is 
What is the opportunity cost of overpaying our student finance loan? Now, what I mean by opportunity cost is what else could I do with that money if I decided not to put that money towards student finance repayments? For those that are on the plan one scheme, I demonstrated in a previous video how you can find regular savings accounts which earn you 2% or plus in interest. So if you chose to put that money into one of those savings accounts, you will find that on net, you'll be on the positive because the interest that you're earning through that savings account is more than the interest that you're paying through the student finance scheme. Or alternatively, for those that are on either plan one or plan two schemes, if you use that money instead to invest in the long term, you are likely to get a much higher rate of return on interest compared to what you're getting on student finance. If you want to take your first steps towards investing, I did a really good step-by-step -step video on how to invest in a Vanguard account, a link in the description and in the cards for that. So those were the questions that I asked myself when I was trying to figure out whether or not I should make additional repayments to my student finance. I'm actually part of the group which was the last of the Plan 1 schemes. I actually started uni in September 2011. And based on my findings, it made much more sense for me not to overpay my student finance. And I would say that is true for most cases for people in both plan one and plan two scheme. As I'm on the plan one scheme, even though that I'm very likely to pay back the value of my loan plus additional interest if I just let it roll out of my pay slip every month, I'm basing it on the assumption that my salary grows in the future or at least stays constant. And I know this may not be the case, particularly when you're looking at the current times during this pandemic, when the unemployment rate is peaking at its highest point for several years. Plus with the additional notes that I could use that money instead and put it into a high interest rate savings account or put it in an investment fund and earn more money that way. And on top of that fact, I'll actually be getting a mortgage in the near future, which will be a higher interest rate earning debt than my student finance loan. So the conclusion for me not to overpay on my student finance loan was pretty obvious. And that's what I've decided to do. But of course, there are many variables at play here and I can't predict them all. And I'm sure there are scenarios out there where it does make sense to overpay on your student finance loan. But hopefully this video has given you all the facts and knowledge that you need to make the decision for yourself. Cool, so that's it for this week's episode. Be sure to let me know in the comment section down below about whether or not you decided to overpay on your student finance loans or not. I would love to hear what deciding factors caused you to make that decision. And if you found this video really useful, I would really appreciate you gave this a thumbs up. That will do wonders for the growth of my channel. I release a video every single Monday, so if you wanna keep up to date with those, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well. See you later.